Hello viewers, in today's session we are going to discuss another important problem from uh, differentiation in which we are going to uh, find out the derivative of this function uh, that is y is equal to f of x is equal to cot inverse uh, 3x plus 4 uh, using the concept of first principle. Right? So, viewers, we have uh, already discussed uh, these type of problems in our earlier videos. So, here uh, we'll see how we can uh, find out the derivative of cot inverse 3x plus 4 uh, using uh, the definition, the limit definition of uh, derivative. Right? Now, see, uh, if we have a function say y is equal to uh, f of x, uh, and the derivative of uh, y with respect to x is given by uh, dy over dx and dy over dx is given by this limit that is limit delta x tends to 0 and here we have delta y over delta x and this is uh, f of x plus delta x minus f of x uh, divided by uh, delta x where uh, delta x and delta y are the small increments uh, in x and y right where x is our independent variable and y is uh, our uh, dependent variable so now to get the uh, derivative of y is uh, equal to uh, cot inverse uh, 3x plus 4 uh, let us first take a uh, cot to the uh, cot inverse to the left hand side so that we can write cot y is equal to uh, 3x plus 4 right okay now uh, let us uh, make a small increment in x so that we can get a small increment a uh, uh, small increment corresponding to the value of y Right. So let us increase x by x plus delta x so that uh, y uh, is increased by y plus delta y. Right. So we have cot of uh, y plus uh, delta y and here we have 3 of uh, x plus delta x plus 4. Right. So now uh, this is equation 1 and this is equation 2. So uh, let us uh, subtract uh, 1 uh, from 2. So uh, 2 minus 1 is given by cot. Here we have y plus delta y minus cot of uh, y. And here we have uh, 3x plus 3 times delta x plus 4. And then uh, we subtract uh, 3x plus 4. Right now, cot of y plus delta y can be written as a uh, cos of y plus delta y uh, divided by uh, sine of y plus delta y, and here cot y can be written as cos y over uh, sine y, and here we have 3x plus 3 delta x plus 4, and here we have minus 3x minus 4. So 3x and 3x get cancelled, 4 and 4 get cancelled. So we are left with uh, 3 uh, delta x. And here uh, we have used uh, this uh, definition of cot theta that is cos theta over uh, sine of theta. Right. Okay. So now uh, let us uh, simplify this expression uh, by taking the LCM that is sine uh, y plus uh, delta y. Uh, here we have sine y. And now we can uh, cross multiply. So we have here uh, sine y and then we have cos of uh, y plus delta y and then minus uh, we have cos of y and then uh, we have uh, here a uh, sine of uh, y plus uh, delta y and here we have 3 times delta x. So now let us see uh, this expression 
in the numerator here we have sine y cos y plus delta y here we have cos y uh, sine of y plus delta y so here uh, we can use this important uh, result from trigonometry that is sine uh, a minus b is given by uh, sine a then we have cos of b minus cos of a and then we have sine of b so now if we take uh, a as a y and b as a y plus uh, delta y then this expression in the uh, numerator uh, it becomes sine a then we have cos of b minus uh, cos of a then we have sine of b and in the denominator we have sine of y plus uh, delta y and here we have sine of y this is uh, 3 uh, delta x right so this is uh, simply sine a minus b uh, due to this result and here we have sine y plus delta y sine y and here we have 3 delta x now see a minus b now a minus b is uh, given by a y minus a y minus delta y so y and y get cancelled so we have simply a minus a delta y so here we have a minus b is equal to minus delta y so this is sine of minus delta y over a sine of a y plus delta y and here we have sine of y and this is 3 delta x so now uh, here uh, we can use an important identity from trigonometry that is sine of minus theta is the minus sine theta. So sine of minus delta y is minus sine uh, delta y and here we have sine uh, y plus uh, delta y and this is sine y and this is 3 uh, delta x right okay. So now uh, we have reached this uh, important uh, result. Now what we will do, uh, we'll uh, divide uh, both sides uh, by uh, delta y, right? Because uh, dy over dx is equal to limit delta x tends to zero, delta y over delta x. So uh, let us divide both sides uh, by delta y and then uh, we'll take the limit that is uh, delta x tends to zero. So dividing both sides by delta y, we have minus uh, sine delta y over uh, delta y. Here we have sine uh, y plus uh, delta y and this is sine y. And here we have 3 uh, delta x over uh, delta y. Right. Okay. Now let us write this expression like this that is minus sine uh, delta y over delta y so let us take this delta y in the denominator of uh, sine delta y and then uh, here we have sine uh, y plus uh, delta y and then we have sine of y and here uh, we have three times delta x over delta y so delta x over delta y can be written as delta y over uh, delta x, right? So there is no harm in writing uh, delta x over delta y as delta y over delta x, right? Okay, now let us take a limit uh, that is delta x tends to zero. And remember uh, delta x and delta y are small increments in x and y. So when we uh, take uh, delta x tends to 0, then uh, delta y also tends to 0. So taking the limit here, uh, delta y tends to 0 because here all the terms are in terms of y. So uh, if we take uh, the limit delta x tends to 0 on both sides, then here uh, the limit uh, uh, delta x tends to 0 can be replaced by uh, delta y tends to 0. And here uh, we can uh, now write limit uh, delta x tends to uh, 0, right? Okay, so now uh, this limit 
is equal to 1 because the sine uh, theta over theta limit theta tends to 0 is equal to 1. So this limit is equal to uh, 1. So we have minus 1 in the uh, numerator because a limit delta y tends to 0. Uh, sine delta y over delta y is equal to uh, 1. And here uh, when we take the limit in the uh, denominator then this delta y goes to 0. So we have simply sine y and here also we have a sine of a y. And now uh, in the right hand side we have 3 and we can take a limit uh, delta x tends to 0 and this is uh, a delta y over delta x. Now this term is uh, uh, equal to uh, the derivative that is dy over uh, dx. So now we have a minus 1 over uh, sine square y because sine y uh, multiplied with sine y is sine square y and here we have 3 over uh, dy over dx right and uh, y is given by cot inverse 3x plus 4. Now cross multiplying we have dy over dx is equal to minus uh, 3 times uh, sine square y. Right? Now uh, sine y is equal to 1 over uh, cosec y. So we have minus 3 over cosec uh, square y. Right? Now uh, cosec square y can be replaced uh, by this identity that is 1 plus cot square y. So this is an important identity from uh, trigonometry that is uh, cosec square theta is equal to 1 plus cot square theta. So we have minus 3 over 1 plus cot square y. Now cot y is equal to uh, 3x plus 4. So we have minus 3 over 1 plus 3x plus 4 and here we have a square. Right? So this is minus 3 over 1 plus uh, 9x square, a plus b whole square, then we have 16, uh, 4 square and then 2ab that is 2 times 3, 6 times 4, uh, 24x. So this is minus 3 over uh, 9x square plus 24x plus 17. Right? So dy over dx uh, is equal to minus 3 divided by 9x square plus 24x plus 17 and the derivative that is uh, d by dx of uh, cot inverse uh, 3x plus 4 is given by uh, this expression. Right? So this is how uh, by making use of the concept of first principle uh, we can uh, find out the derivative of functions. Hello viewers, in today's session we are going to discuss another very important and conceptual problem from derivatives involving the absolute value function which is also known as modulus function. Right? So in this class we are uh, again uh, going to uh, solve one important problem related to derivatives. So here uh, we have a function f of x which is uh, given as a mod of secant 3x and we have to uh, find the value of this expression that is e raised to greatest integer of f prime of x at x is equal to 5 pi by 12. Right. So here uh, we are given a function uh, that is a mod function, the mod function of a trigonometric function and then uh, we have to find uh, the derivative of this function uh, at this point 5 pi by 12 and then uh, with the help of uh, the value of the derivative at this point uh, we'll calculate the value of e raised to uh, greatest integer of f prime of x. 
So here uh, we are going to uh, use the definition of mod function and some important uh, concepts from uh, trigonometry. So let us start. So now let us first quickly see the sign convention of trigonometric functions in the uh, four quadrants. So here uh, we have the four uh, quadrants. This is first, second, third and uh, fourth. So here we have zero, here we have pi by two, here we have pi, here we have three pi by two and then we have two pi, right? So here we have f of x is equal to mod of three x. Right now, see in the first quadrant, all the trigonometric uh, functions are positive, and in the uh, second quadrant, only the sine and uh, cosec uh, functions are uh, positive, and in the third quadrant, uh, only the uh, tangent function and uh, cotangent function uh, that is uh, cot and uh, tan function are uh, positive and in the fourth quadrant uh, only the uh, cosine function and the secant function are positive right so now here uh, we are given f of x is equal to mod of uh, 3x now here uh, let us see uh, this term that is uh, 3x now we have to find the value of the derivative at this point uh, that is 5 pi by 12. So let us uh, find out the value of 3x at this point. So we have 3 times 5 pi by 12. So this is uh, 3 times 4 12. So we have 5 pi by 4 that is uh, 225 degrees. Right, so we see that this angle that is 3x it lies in the uh, third quadrant, right? And in the third quadrant, uh, the secant function is negative because uh, the tan uh, function and uh, cot function are uh, positive, right? And the remaining four uh, trigonometric functions are negative, so here uh, this angle that is. Uh, 3x this is our 3x and 3x is uh, equal to 225 degrees at this point and uh, this angle falls in the third quadrant and in the third quadrant uh, the secant function uh, is uh, negative right so 3x lies uh, in the third quadrant that is 3x is greater than pi but it is less than uh, 3 pi by 2. So the secant function is negative. Now let us quickly see the definition of mod function. Now see a uh, mod of p is defined as negative p uh, when uh, p is less than 0. So here uh, we can also uh, define mod p as positive p whenever p is greater than 0 and mod of p is 0 when p is 0. But here I will use only this part of the definition. So mod of p is negative p when p is less than 0. So now a uh, secant x, uh, secant 3x is negative. That is it is less than 0 uh, when uh, x is 5 pi by uh, 12. Or we can, uh, in other words, we can say that uh, 3x lies in the interval that is pi to uh, 3 pi by 2. So mod of secant 3x is equal to negative of secant 3x when 3x belongs to the interval uh, that is uh, pi to uh, 3 pi by 2. So remember here uh, secant 3x is uh, assumed to be a p. Right, so mod of p is equal to negative of p when p is less than 0, it means uh, secant uh, 3x is less than uh, 0 when uh, 3x belongs to the third quadrant. Right, so now f of x is given by a negative uh, secant of 3x. 
so now let us uh, differentiate uh, f of x with respect to x so the derivative f prime of x is uh, given by uh, d by dx of negative of secant 3x that is the negative d by dx of secant 3x now uh, from uh, the standard results uh, from derivatives we know that uh, the derivative of secant theta is given by uh, secant theta tan theta so here uh, theta is 3x so we have minus then we have secant 3x tan 3x and by chain rule uh, the derivative of 3x so the derivative of 3x is simply uh, 3 so we have minus 3 secant 3x uh, tan uh, 3x so the derivative that is f prime of x is given by uh, this expression that is minus 3 secant 3x uh, tan 3x so now uh, let us write f prime of x as minus 3 uh, secant 3x can be written as 1 over cos 3x and tan 3x can be written as sine 3x over uh, cos 3x so we have minus 3 and here we have sine 3x and uh, here we have cos square uh, 3x so this is another expression uh, for the derivative of f of x so now let us find out the value of the derivative at this point 5 pi by 12 so f prime of uh, 5 pi by 12 is given by a minus 3 sine uh, we have 3 times uh, 5 pi by 12 taking x is equal to 5 pi by 12 and then uh, we have cos square uh, 3 times 5 pi by 12 so here we have minus 3 sine uh, this is 3 times 4 this is 3 times 4 we have sine 5 pi by 4 divided by cos square uh, 5 pi by 4 so now uh, we have to uh, find the value of sine 5 pi by 4 and cosine uh, 5 pi by 4 so let us uh, use some trigonometry to get the values of sine 5 pi by 4 and cos 5 pi by 4 so sine 5 pi by 4 is given by sine pi plus pi by 4 so we can split 5 pi by 4 as pi plus pi by 4 and uh, similarly here we can write uh, pi plus pi by 4 so here uh, we have sine uh, pi plus uh, say theta and here also we have cos uh, pi plus theta right where theta is given by uh, pi by uh, 4 so sine pi plus theta is given by a minus sine theta and similarly cos pi plus theta is given by minus cos theta so here we have minus sine uh, theta is pi by 4 and here we have minus cos pi by 4 so this is a minus 1 over square root of 2 and here also we have minus 1 over square root of 2 because sine pi by 4 and cos pi by 4 are equal to a 1 over square root of 2. So now f prime of 5 pi by 12 is given by a minus 3 and sine 5 pi by 4 is a given by a minus 1 over square root of 2 and here uh, we have cos square 5 pi by 4 so we have minus 1 over square root of 2 uh, square right okay so now uh, this is minus time minus plus so we have 3 by uh, root 2 and this is minus 1 over root 2 square so we have uh, here a uh, 1 over uh, 2 right so this is 3 over root 2 times 2 and that is 6 over root 2 
so we can now write 6 over root 2 rationalizing the numerator and denominator by square root of 2 we have 6 root 2 over 2 and this is 2 times 3 is 6 so this is 3 root 2 so the value of the derivative uh, of f of x at this point uh, that is 5 pi by 12 is given by uh, 3 times square root of 2. So now our aim is to get the value of e raised to greatest integer of f prime of x at this point that is uh, 5 pi by 12. So we can now write e raised to uh, the greatest integer of f prime of 5 pi by 12 f prime of 5 pi by 12 is uh, 3 root 2 now see uh, the value of 3 root 2 is given by 3 times uh, the approximate value of square root of 2 is 1.414 and if we multiply uh, 3 and 1.414 uh, will get uh, 4.242 right and the greatest integer of uh, 3 root 2 is given by greatest integer of 4.242 and the greatest integer of 4.242 is 4 right so the value of e raised to greatest integer of 3 root 2 is given by e raised to 4 Right? So the value of uh, this expression that is e raised to greatest integer of f prime of 5 pi by 12 is equal to e raised to uh, 4.